G'day and welcome. It is 2015. Disc golf is back in action early this year. I have the distinct privilege of coming to you live from Perth, Western Australia. It's the first disc golf major in the Southern Hemisphere from Mundaring Disc Golf Park and Sporting Club up in the hills just outside of the beautiful city of Perth. And I have a very special guest today with me. I've got an actual Australian who can do the accent way better than I can. I've got Chris Finn. He's a big promoter here down in Australia, three-time Australian champion and a competitor in this event. Chris, welcome. G'day, mate. Thanks very much for having me. All right. See, I already love the accent. This is uh, We've had an amazing time down here in Perth, some of the best hospitality. We really wish uh, more of you guys could have been here. We hope to see you next time. But all that aside, let's get into some great disc golf footage. Uh, we are going to have in the lead card, Mick Beast, three-time world champion, the man himself, Paul Macbeth. He's going to be sitting at 33 under. Simon Lazat is five back from him at 28 under. Ricky Wasaki has a little bit of ground to try to make up. He's sitting at 21 down for the tournament. And uh, we came in with a tie yesterday. Nate Doss and Dave Feldberg, both very good players, world champions in their own right, sitting at 20, but... By virtue of the better third round, David Feldberg is going to round out our top four. You ready to get started? Yeah, man, I'm sure ready. Let's do it. All right. Hole one, Mundaring Disc Golf Park. This is a par four. It's 225 meters. We've got about 18 and a half meters downhill drop from the tee. You're going to see an elevated tee pad right as the guys tee off. OB left and right. We're playing on an old golf course. Uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, course, Chris, and, and how we got it in and, and where it came from. Yeah, so look, I mean, the, uh, the hills area that this is in is, is perfect for disc golf. You know, it's one of the only locations in Perth where you're actually gonna get some elevation. Um, the old golf course is, it's like a country course, so there's no reticulation. If there's any rain, that's what keeps it green during winter and summer. Obviously, as it is now, it's a little bit drier. Uh, the discs tend to skip off it a little bit, but um, you know what a pleasure for us to have such a, an excellent area to design and install this disc golf course for uh, Australian disc golf. You can see right there, Paul Macbeth is uh, going to start the round not the way he wanted to. He's going to get some of that skip you're talking about, flare out to the left. Simon's going to make a nice correction here and kind of get the right edge of that disc down and get a softer landing. And uh, the big danger of this hole is. Uh, Simon's put it very nice. You've got to get between the golf greens, which are all out of bounds, and the back line OB, um, which bleeds into hole two's fairway. Yeah, I mean, where the, uh, the golf green is located is generally going to be the best spot to land, and you know, that's why we put it there. It's exactly 155 metres uh, downhill, so you, know, you, can, you can play at that throwing about 100 to 120 metres in feet. I guess that's about 350. Um, you know, and it's really to tease the guys. You know, we want them to to get that perfect line, but if they, they miss, then they're going to get a stroke. And today the wind is down a little bit. Uh, we, we saw some more wind as we were going into the practice days and in the first few rounds. You see Feldberg right there is going to land in that golf green that you're talking about. So it allowed Simon and Ricky to get further down, whereas in the previous rounds they were sitting in front and uh, playing more of a layup placement shot. There's Paul, he's going to take the trusty rock three, Heiser in a little bit, and he's going to challenge that OB line. And Felber's going to take a mark. And this is a tough green to access. Yeah, mate, it's protected by one of the Australian grass trees. Um, we do have another local name, but we'll, we'll keep it at the Australian grass tree. Um, you know, and it, it is, it's, you want that perfect line. If you're anything wide there like Ricky, you've got to try and come in, come in and around, and it's tough. Those Jarrah trees really protect the, uh, the green. And Simon's going to take that same forehand route. That grass might have helped him a little bit slow it down and keep him on the green. And Ricky's going to look to be about the circle's edge for his first putt of the round. Yeah, it's a tough putt with the OB behind, about five meters. Yeah, pressure's on. Just off the cage, and Macbeth goes out of bounds early. Ricky's going to miss a putt. And, and you can tell that even though there's some gaps between their scores, they, they won a battle and, and they, they feel the pressure of this event. And uh, Simon, uh, Looks like he thought the headwind was going to go and take and lift his disc a little bit. He's known for liking headwind putts, which is pretty uncommon for disc golfers. Yeah, it's, uh, I didn't see that. Obviously, I was playing the second card, but um, you know Simon was hitting most of the putts that I saw yesterday. But uh, yeah, the pressure of the first hole in the final. And we have Dave Feldberg trying to capitalize, and well, he's going to take a par as well, and a uh, couple drop-ins, and a whole uh, par frame. 
not not the hot start that I'm sure you know most of the audience out there is looking for after hearing tell of 53s and 52s but you know to the final day and like you're saying there's there's always pressure no matter what the lead is no matter what the situation is so with pars and uh we'll give a little shout out to uh, nate doss who was tied with uh dave going in nate did actually uh birdie it so he's gonna take a stroke on feldberg earlier trying to move up into the top four hole two another par four yes Macbeth eagled it in the round before no i'm sorry we had no cameras i've got to get that out the way but let's see what he can do today he's gonna lead off our group yeah, the idea behind this hole is the uh, the creek is uh, in such a position where, you know, if you really want it, you can go over the top. Sometimes uh, the big guys, Simon, he could go over there, but you know, we're trying to get people to play their mid range in a nice position for the second shot. And uh, what's the thinking behind that? You know, a lot of disc golfers, especially in the United States, we know disc golf is more of a, a par three base system. A lot of um, birdie or die golf and. You know, it's it's a little bit different. It's a little more like golf, forcing these guys to club down and, and lay up first. Yeah, we, um, you know, when we're designing this course, we, we're really putting something in the ground that we want players that are new to the game to be able to test all their shots, you know, not just the pitch and putt, not just driving, you know, every hole something different. So, you know, the ability to have a good design and, and force people to, I guess, empty their bag of shots is, uh, is what we're hoping for the local players in the future. And you're going to see Feldberg right there. He's going to play it a little safe. And this is a Feldberg signature. He's the only person I saw all weekend throw a roller on this hole for the second shot. He's going to curl up a little bit deep of the basket and cut in, and he'll have a look. He'll have a long look for birdie. And Paul McBeth is in perfect position here. Yeah, he's just cut it a bit early. A tough spot out there doesn't like it he gets a little bit lucky he uh, landed in that tall grass and uh, saved himself Ricky found the OB line not by too much as you can see right there and uh, Ricky just goes right up and throws he's he's one of the fastest players in the game he does not take a lot of time uh, except when he has really long putts other than that he kind of just goes up and, and already knows what he's doing by the time he approaches the lie Simon will take a uh, forehand route with a PD2 there, put it just inside the circle. Paul's thinking a lot about this one. Tough straddle, tough, tough straddle from the knees and uh, it's going to give these guys an opportunity to gain a stroke on them, and which they'll definitely need to do early and often in order to catch his big lead. Yeah, it's a downhill shot there. You can't quite see it, but uh, that was probably playing in his mind as well. And Feldberg is going to be a little low as well. These guys aren't off to the hot putting start. There's one. Finally getting a putt in outside five meters is uh, Simon Lazat. You see the nice Aussie open flags blowing above the basket there. He was putting with a tailwind. That should be pretty routine for Ricky. And he'll clean up and save his par, as will Dave and Paul. And uh, Simon, going to be the only one to birdie that hole. Uh, take a three, grab the box, and uh, move on to hole three very shortly. All right, hole three. We have a par three. Uh, this is 115 meters. It is uphill. Uh, it looks to be about an eight meter rise uphill. You're playing up to the fairway. You've got the, the golf green uh, that's gonna be about pin high left of the basket and it's up raised on a, on a flat spot as you're throwing uphill. Uh, so you're really gonna have to try to avoid uh, not only the fringe where it slopes down, but uh, the trees which are gonna be off the to the left side of the camera frame. And uh, a little tester for, for some of us uh, AM players, but for you know bigger arms, this is not a problem at all to get this right up there. Yeah, you want a nice uh, slow turning Anheuser off the tee and you know the, the green's positioned in a way that you know it'll penalize you if you don't get the shot. You're gonna fade into that green. Simon got pin high, easily done with his power, and he's gonna have a little tester putt to try to get the two. And Macbeth's played it yeah, that's beautifully. Good that's about perfect. Uh, that's what you need to do when you, you know, come out and don't get those first two birdies that you really want to get. Nothing better than turning around and parking the hole. 
Yeah, I was pretty happy with this hole. I, uh, I ended up just up on the top of the hill there, downhill putt just on the circle and uh, made my two the first one for the uh, tournament. There you go. Everybody's got a shot here. Yeah, Phil Bird. like he's fading out towards the green. Fading out. Luckily, he's a little, a little bit short. short and uh, he'll be the first on the fairway for an upshot. Uh, see if he decides to run it or just play it safe this early in the round. Yeah, it's a long part just outside. I'd say it's about 15 metres and sloping downhill. Yeah, he's laid it up. Laid it up very nicely. Uh, he still has plenty of golf to play. Um, you have to wonder whether he's thinking about the fact that he was tied with Nate Doss going into this round. and uh, it, it can be tough in that position when you've got a guy that's on the card below you, but he's shot just as well as you, so you can't necessarily get in a position where you're chasing the leaders. You've got to also remember that you could be caught because every place to these guys is hundreds of dollars. That's a very nice putt by Simon. And here's Ricky from just above the basket on the fringe of the golf green. Strong putt. Puts it right in. And that should be nice and easy for Paul to claim the birdie. Paul and Simon going to grab the birdie on the first par three, um, as well as Ricky. And Feldberg will take the lone par. And we're going to move on to hole four. And I have to say that uh, hole four is probably my favorite hole on the entire front nine. Uh, this is a 150 meter par four. So it's not the length that gets you, but you have to play a tight line. You're going to tee off from the, the rough of the golf. Uh, fairway to the right and you're going to cut across to the left side where a beautiful path has been cut uh, through the trees. we got to give a big shout out to uh, Ryan, Ryan Renzel. Yeah, absolutely. Good job on the chainsaw cutting through those tough jarra trees. Uh, yeah, the idea is you want to get in there but you don't want to skip in too far because the left hand side's a lot a lot heavier, heavily wooded. And uh, Simon's going to challenge that left side. We'll have to see how he ends up and what his lie is like for his second shot. There's Paul Macbeth. Yeah, if it gets down, he's, uh, it's a good throw. And uh, you can see the wind gave it a little bit of a lift, which, uh, you know, helped him a little bit by slowing it down, but also lifted him higher, so he is going to fade further to the left. Ricky gets a low release and probably gets uh, lucky right there he didn't clip that tree. Yeah, he's probably in a great position too, you know, you get the two options once you get up to this hole, left you, and right. You will see that there's two lines uh, to the green, and uh, let's see which one Feldberg takes. And Feldberg's throwing a very nice shot right here. That's yeah. going to be way up the fairway. Yeah, he's in a good position for a three from there. Uh, you can see Feldberg's uh, yellow uh, driver up there on the right side of the frame as uh, Ricky checks out which line he wants to take with the forehand. Ra's handiwork with those trees. Fantastic job, beautifully cut fairway. Perfect forehand played right down it. That's top notch. Paul's gonna also line up the forehand. He has a little bit tricky of a lie. He's gotta watch his follow through on that tree right in front of him that he doesn't smack his hand when he follows through. A Little bit higher of an approach. Nice and soft landing, that should play very nice. And uh, this is where you want to be if you're a predominantly right-hand, backhand player like Dave Feldberg. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be off to the side in those little bushes, you know, little insects, a few spiders, maybe the occasional drop bear. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you explain to them what that is. So the, uh, the, the koalas uh, tend to hang out in the trees. So, you know, we, we gave the warning to players just to watch out for the drop bears. That's a koala dropping out of the tree. That's... Another one of the great Australian slang that I've picked up while I'm here. I'm absolutely loving it. Some drop bears, some long putts. We'll see if this is uh, too easy for Simon Lazat, who's known for really canning these long putts. Let's see if he can make it happen. Yeah. Ooh, stays in on the weak side chains. Solid putt. And that should be easy for everybody else who's right around the basket, but... That was a great par save by Simon. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's battling with Macbeth right now. He has to make sure he does not give up those uh, strokes when he doesn't have to. Yeah, it's, 
It's a good way, good hole. <coughs> All the, uh, the hard course work there done by Jason Brown of Perth as well on the uh, weed whack. Big shout out to uh, all the Western Australia disc golfers from, uh, from Perth, from Mundaring. Did a fantastic job. Uh, the course is looking great and, you know, already I can't wait to be back here next time. Uh, we're gonna move on to hole five. Par three, 100 meter. This is a little more reminiscent of a, a North Carolina hole, um, you know, on the east coast of the US. This is a, a nice tight fairway and you need to kind of flex it as a righty with the backhand. And Simon didn't get it around that first guardian tree right there. Yeah, he, was in, he had the right line. I just didn't think he got it over enough. But yeah, this is definitely the kind of hole we put in to, uh, you know, to teach the kids how to throw a good Anheuser that flexes out, you know, a nice S shot. Um, if you make it, you can get that birdie. Height control is very crucial on this type of shot. So as, it, as the disc flexes out, it can kind of ride down to the green. And, um, yeah, he's flexed a bit early there. Oh. Got a little lucky kid. Uh, that's a little bit lucky, as a uh, good old Dave Feldberg would say. I think he flashed the ring a little bit right there and got through that gap and uh, kicked out into the fairway. Ricky's got another kind of lower line. Yeah, it's a good shot. With a longer driver, and you can see a couple different ways of attacking the hole. You can throw the high mid range, you can throw uh, the low driver and kind of speed around the corner a little bit quicker. Yeah, that's, that's probably the best shot of the round, that one. He's definitely going to be looking at a birdie there. Uh, Dave's throwing a very nice shot. I, I agree with you. And here's Simon. He's going to have to get up. Luckily uh, for him right now, Paul McBeth is not really uh, lying in much of a better position, but Simon definitely needs to get up there and get up and down for this par. And that'll still be a tester. Some of these players, uh, you can you can tell the back and forth. You know, sometimes they they come out and they just slay the course, the 52s, 53s, and sometimes it's looking a little bit rough. You know, see if they can shake off the rust from the winter. And that was a great run by Paul right there. Yeah, it was about 20 meters. It's a, it's a big throw. He actually came up to me right before he uh, took that shot, and he apologized that he wasn't off to a hot start like he was on the the 52 round. <laughs> There goes Ricky with a real nice putt. He's going to claim his uh, second birdie in a row and see if Dave can follow suit. Ooh. He was a little low from the start, and he, he's been a little bit high on the basket on this hole, and you just got to kind of dial it in, you know. It, that's a good par save by Simon. We saw that at the season's end at USDGC with uh, Johnny McRae. It, it's tough, you know, you, you don't want to be dialing in your putt on the first few holes of the round. Um, and, and Dave seems to be doing that right now. And there's a good save from Paul as well. And Dave will tap in his par. And uh, hole six. Let's go on to hole six. 190 meter par four. There's a big OB pool. Um, that extends beyond the golf green uh, as the hole's gonna hook hard to the left and you actually have to go through a nice little cutout corridor to reach the pin so you either need to lay up to the right of the OB and throw straight across it towards the basket or you need to go beyond the OB and that's the real aggressive line that some of these guys are gonna try right here. Yeah I think Ricky's probably hit the wind a little there and he's tearing off into the bush. And he's He's definitely gripped it, and he's going to be deep in the rough. Uh, hopefully, he will have a, a window out of that. There goes Simon's going to tee off on one. Yeah, he's got the good distance. He's going to get it right in the sweet spot out there. And this is very interesting right here. There's no limit on time, right? Just because you threw off the dirt. I have to call that. You can see your footprint. Saying that you, threw from here. you can see your footprint right there. It wasn't yeah. so obvious. Yeah, that's where you threw from. All right. Paul McBeth called Simon was out for a footfall. Yeah. Go again now or yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so he'll immediately have to re-tee. The first one is a warning. And it looks like he's going to change strategies off of that. And you have to wonder, you know, how much does that get into your head? You know, when you're competing and somebody calls you, do you go up and take the next shot or do you, do you change your strategy? I think he's played it well. He, uh, his second shot, he took a little safe uh, hyzer line there. I think he knew that, you know, he didn't want that to be in his head, so he just played it safe. I think he did well. I had a, I had a foot fault caught on me as well, and 
you know, sometimes it just gets into you a little bit, so I think he did well. And it should be noted, with that rule, you're not allowed to go and get your disc, so it, it also could play into that strategy that he really liked that disc, and uh, another one of his, his drivers, he wasn't as confident in to pull off that same shot. Yeah. yeah I saw and Paul and Dave are also going to play the layup route short of the OB and look straight across at it, which will be just off to the right side of the frame here. Yeah, he's looking for a, for a hyzer line, but I think he's... Uh, it's flattened it out. Maybe there's a back door. No, no luck there. You got a little bit deep of it, a little too flat on the hyzer, like you were talking about. And uh, Ricky's just going to launch a forehand. Yeah, it's a good shot. You have a good uh, putt inside the circle. That's a great shot. And when you get off into the bush on, on the sides, you know, there's some tall grass. There's some, um, some, some bushes that prevent you from having a run up, uh, especially here on this course. So you have to kind of take some power off, and it really shows the power of Ricky Wasaki's sidearm. That's nice by Simon. Simon's played a nice uh, hyzer shot there, and he's going to be pin high. Paul's got a tough tough line out there, and hyzer shot to the basket. Uh, he got a little bit further than you want, but tough yeah, anheuser for Paul that. Macbeth is, you know, if that was tough, then that was impossible for the rest of us. Yeah. That was a great line. He's a little bit out the back, but he will have a look. Uh, here's Dave Feldberg. Looks like he's going to line up an aggressive one right here by his uh, the way he approached that. <sighs> that did not miss by very much. Just kissed off the chastity belt on top and sitting, luckily sitting right underneath the basket. Got no roll, as those, those can sometimes tend to happen to you. And here's Paul Macbeth for birdie. And you had to wonder if he's thinking about that tailwind. You saw the flag moving right before, and it kind of died down right as he went to putt. And he, he left it high, thinking it was going to get slammed. Yeah. A chance for Ricky Wasaki after a tough first drive to... That's, this is a big birdie after that mistake off the tee. And putter's coming alive for Wasaki today. He's now gotten the last three in a row. And Simon, the tough roll. He's going to putt from almost the same distance that he uh, just missed from. I felt like you rushed that a little bit. Yeah, you, the win today was very interesting. It was, uh, or, or that day, I should say. It was very interesting. It would, it would blow, it would gust through, and then it would go dead calm. Is, is that common for the course out here? Yeah, it's typical for Perth. You know, we, uh, we tend to get the prevailing wind, but then there's always gusts when there's uh, storms around. So, yeah, we are feeling it out there. I threw a drive off that same hole, and, you know, probably my most stable, stable tee bird it just got smashed, turned over to the right, you know. And it's a tough wind. You can see that there, there'll be some rain falling at some points. The sun is going to come out at some points. Uh, the storm front that, that was coming through on the final round day was pretty unpredictable. Um, hole 7, 175 meter par 4. You've got to get to the right through that gap, and then there's a drop zone. Um, there's a, a mando with a drop zone if you don't get into the next gap, which you'll see in, in just a moment. Uh, this is a really touch Anheuser shot for these pros. Simon's going to go on an aggressive line, and it, it looks like it's uh, cut the corner a little too hard. So, so far, Simon's having a, a little trouble getting it going. Paul isn't playing incredibly hot so far either, but, you know, he doesn't have to play incredibly hot today. Simon, The pressure is on Simon to really kind of take some strokes back and, and close that gap. Yeah, Paul just hit the perfect line there. I think he'll be in a great spot. And here's Dave. Yeah, it's looking pretty good too. It's got some nice carry on it. If it gets a little Anheuser uh, angle skid, then it'll be real nice. Uh, you can see the gap and uh, the mando on the big tree way to the left. Simon's going to be a little bit short on this hole. He's going to have a, a tough birdie look. And Paul's played it very nice here. And that's a textbook layup right there from the champ. 
Ricky's going to go to the knee with the forehand, which uh, he has typically no problem doing. He's down on one knee, mate. He's waiting for some Australian girls. <laughs> and he's uh, <laughs> he's definitely got the, the lankiness uh, in, in his build that allows him to execute those shots that uh, might be a little tougher for a guy who's not quite as uh, tall or built that way. Here's Dave. Ooh, got a nice little uh, tree hit there that probably stopped him from going out the back. He skipped off something uh, hard on the ground and was uh, speeding past the basket for a moment. And here's a long look from Simon. Good run, leaves it a little bit wide. As you can see, uh, wind's not too much of a factor, so this should be routine. Yeah, that's a nice green in there. The tree's a little bit scorched by uh, bushfires from a couple of years ago, but... Um yeah, it looks pretty good. It's looking excellent, and we have to note that that's going to be uh, that five five in a row for Ricky Wasaki, uh, three through seven, and he's having a real quiet day. And the way he's playing his round so far, you can really see the importance of the up shot, the second shot, especially on a course like this where there's a lot of par fours. The onus is to do a placement drive and then get an accurate up shot to the green. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, it's a tough course, but if you're if you're hitting the two lines, you you're gonna take your birdies. You know, it definitely rewards you. And we're gonna move on to at least for these top level players here, what's gonna be one of the easier holes on the front nine. It's par three, 90 meter hole eight. Uh, you're gonna throw out. It's gonna be a left to right cut sharply, and there is an island that plays really really tight. You've got to get it back around and into what is the rough of the golf course, but the green for our purposes. And uh, if not, there is a drop zone. So Ricky's going to opt to take the forehand skip route. And he's going to go into the bush, and he's going to challenge the back line OB. We'll have to see if he's safe. I think Beth looks like he's going for the forehand as well. Yeah, it's a good way to play if you got the forehand on this hole. And unlike Ricky, he's gonna he's gonna take the higher route, which is gonna give him less of a skip. But uh, he got an aggressive little roll there, as you can see. The wind was pushing towards the left side of camera, but he should like that result. And Dave Feldberg throwing a roller, curling nice, a little bit of trouble, and he hits the stake. He's gonna stay in bounds. Yeah, a little lucky there. Yeah, sometimes uh, you need the brakes to go both ways. And uh, he's going to stay in bounds on that. Simon will opt for sort of in between uh, Ricky and Paul's forehand. Yeah, that's a good shot. And I'll roll right inside and I'm going to give him a nice look for birdie. There's Dave Feldberg from, looks to be about 11, 12 meters out from the pin. Little high, and that's the uh, second time in three holes that he's gone off the chastity belt on one of those long putts. The putter's rising a little bit out here. And that one got high on Simon, too, but stayed low enough to be in the chains, drop right into the cage for a birdie. Yeah, I think I was wearing a jumper at this point. I was getting a little bit cold. <laughs> Dave's putters might have been a bit soft. Uh, Definitely the uh, Chris and uh, you and some of the other Australian players were a lot more used to the heat than uh, some of the North Americans and, and the, especially the Europeans who are coming from a much more brutal climate uh, this time of year. It's, you know, it's hard to see in the video, but the UV index out here combined with the heat, it can make it really tough to play in these, uh, play these rounds when the sun comes out. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's uh... You're battling the elements, you know, and mid cool to all the Finnish guys that came out. You know, they battled it out for the first couple of days. As long as you're drinking water, stay hydrated, you know, stick in the shade. Um, we usually only get one or two days, and it just happens to be that those days were in practice, so we're pretty lucky. And we got Ricky Wasaki on this ninth hole here. He's going to, most of these guys are going to take the hyzer approach at it. Uh, the green is down, sunk below, and to the left of a golf green with OB. Uh, the tree line is OB, so this is a really touch landing spot. And yeah, Paul 
hole might be a little long there. It might be a little long. He looks to be about the, the right distance coming back to the left um, to not hit the OB, and Simon's going to take a little bit of a, a tighter route. That looks good. Throwing his putter. And here's Dave Feldberg. Wind's picking up a little bit for him. You can see uh, going off the banner and off the bushes, picking up for him a little bit more than the other competitors so far. Yeah, I think they've had a bit of bit of bad luck with the wind this week. You know, sometimes you get blown out, sometimes you, uh, you know, you get the luck. But and he's skip it skip. over the golf green, and from that point it looks like it was a good shot, and it, it must have taken a really bad roll because he did end up out of bounds out the back towards where Ricky is standing right now, and that's just uh, that's unfortunate. He's high again with the putter. A little bit high. He's he's not got the putter working, and, and Dave Feldberg is one of the best putters in the world, and he's a uh, he's he's a little bit tentative with his putt, um, not quite as as uh, solid as he usually is, and uh, that's going to come back to haunt him if he doesn't pick it up coming in the back nine. Yeah, see Paul missed one there. He's kicking up the sand right near a few bull ants. Yeah, he's <laughs> and those bull ants are uh, no joke. Definitely have to watch out for those things. And this is a, this is another birdie for Ricky, and he's just having a quiet day. He's making a charge, and you know Simon and Paul are they do have a nice cushion on him, but if they uh, if they don't wake up and, and get a couple birdies, Ricky's going to be right up there with them very soon. Nice par save from Dave going downhill back towards the OB. Simon, park job, and putter putter. Yeah, that's the way to make it too. Nice and easy. Uh, so Simon and Ricky are going to. Claim birdies on this hole. Dave's going to take a four with a penalty, and Paul with a three. And that's nine holes already. Nine holes through a very beautiful course in uh, the Australian Hills just outside of Perth. And we have to give a big shout out to uh, the community, the Shire of Mundaring, and uh, the sporting club up there. They were so welcoming to us. And, uh, you know, any, anybody else you want to give a shout out to and, and want to say thanks for uh, all the work on this tournament? Yeah, just all the guys in the, uh, the sporting club, you know, they, uh, they welcomed us to, uh, to have this golf in this area, um, you know, and they also helped us out with this tournament. So, you know, fantastic for them and all the guys that put in the yards to, to build this course and to make it happen, you know. 2017 we'll be back bigger and better and yeah, I look forward to it. It's It's been an absolute pleasure to be here in Australia. It's a, a game that is definitely growing um, and you know hopefully with this tournament and into the future that it can really just kickstart some some really big time growth and I know you're going to be at the spearhead of all those efforts. You know Chris thank you so much for coming by and, and lending us some insight and the really awesome accent. I can't say it enough. Thanks for coming by man. Karaki, catch you later mate. All right, coming up, we have the second half. It'll be up soon. I've got a very special guest, somebody who also knows something about a little bit of course design. We've had him on before. He's the Finn that we all love to hear him talk about the promotion in the future game of disc golf. You guys stay tuned. UC Maresma's coming back for the back nine. This is Spin TV 2015 Aussie Open. Later.